going on, everyone? So the Los Angeles Lakers have 13 games left uh, to kind of close out strong and get into the play-in. Uh, hopefully, they can crawl in to the A seed. Uh, I do think the based on the Phoenix Suns' schedule uh, and just the matchups that they have and the way that they've performed this season, I do think it is very possible for the Lakers to kind of leapfrog them into that A seed. Uh, then at that point, they have two chances to win one game to get in, uh, which I do believe that they are capable of doing. Uh, where if they get the ninth or tenth, of course, can they win two straight games? Absolutely. I just, based on the way that the Lakers have performed this season, I don't know how much I trust that, right? Like, go up against the Warriors, it's like, okay, should we beat the Warriors? Absolutely. But can Steph and Clay and all of them get hot for a game and just shoot us out the building, especially if we're, say, on the road or even at L.A., right? Like, yes, absolutely. Uh, and then let's say we do beat the Warriors, and then you got to play a Phoenix Suns team that has Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, or a uh, uh, you know, Dallas Mavericks team that has Kyrie and Luka. Can one of those teams just shoot us out of the, the gym for a game? Absolutely. Like, that's the concern. You know, in a seven-game series where, you know, you're constantly making changes, you got LeBron and his IQ and the way that he can kind of figure stuff out over the course of a seven-game series. We've seen what he's done over his career. Uh, that just is a lot of more value, and I trust the Lakers a lot more to, to win four out of seven games than a one-game sample size where we've seen this team just not show up on big moments and big occasions. Now, playoffs are a completely different thing. LeBron James and Anthony Davis will be more locked in. Also, the total offense and just everything will kind of run through LeBron and AD uh, because it's what they did last year, and that's the, the formula for success, right? I mean, you saw it even in the, uh, the uh, in-season tournament, right, where – it was just, hey, LeBron and AD down on the block, and everything just flows through them, and you try to stop it. And that's what the Lakers' game plan was during the postseason. Uh, obviously, the, we need to be as healthy as possible. Last postseason, you had a LeBron that needed foot surgery. You had an Anthony Davis on one leg. Even D'Lo had foot issues that kept him out of games before the playoffs. So this year, if everyone can be healthy and we can get into uh, the playoffs and in the play and healthy – then imagine what the Lakers could do this season, uh, given that like we were able to make the conference finals with basically a one-legged LeBron AD and D'Angelo Russell. But LeBron appears to really be ramping up going into this final stretch. Uh, you saw it in the Atlanta game. He was a lot more aggressive. Uh, he was just very like in attack mode, kind of setting the tone for the rest of the team. And then the rest of the team followed suit. And I, I've talked about this in the past. I've said this numerous times that, and I even made an entire video on should LeBron be more aggressive early on? You, you usually see LeBron, he likes to get other guys going. He likes to kind of be passive early on. And then he just kind of gets his points throughout the, the course of a game. You'll see he'll get, he'll have like no points at the end of the first, but then he'll have like four. And in the second, you're like, Man, he only has four points at halftime. But then, like, at the end of the game, you're like, wait, LeBron has 30? And it's just because, like, he's just kind of pacing himself. He's kind of picking spots to, to be aggressive in attack. And then at the end of the game, he usually closes and will have, you know, 10 points or whatever in the fourth quarter. Um, I have su suggested that I would like to see LeBron kind of... If you're going to be passive, be passive in like the second or third, but be more aggressive and set the tone and the energy to begin the game. And then, you know, you could serve yourself in that third and uh, that second and fourth, third quarter and then really gear up for the fourth to kind of close these games out. And you saw Atlanta do that, or you saw LeBron do that to Atlanta. And according to DeAndre Russell and Anthony Davis, they kind of feel like he's doing that as well. Like this is deliberate and that he's starting to gear up, that it's that time of year, as they put it. You know, it's time to really gear up and ramp up and and start making that push uh, in these final 13 games to go and try to at least get the eighth seed. Now, is like the fifth and sixth seed statistically there? Yes, I just think it's very unlikely. Um, you know, unfortunately, the Lakers haven't done their job this season. So a lot of those teams... The Pelicans, I just, unless they just have some, like, historical collapse, we're not catching them. Uh, 
Sacramento has tiebreakers. Dallas has tiebreakers. I just don't see the Lakers catching up and outplaying those teams by like four or five games to, to leapfrog them enough to now you're you're in the sixth seed. So I think realistically the A seed should be the Lakers' goal. We can overtake the Phoenix Suns. They have a rough record. Phoenix, I I think go maybe seven and seven. I wouldn't be surprised if they go like six and eight, something like that down the stretch. If you look at their schedule, it is brutal. Uh, so hopefully the Lakers can do their job, lock down, be ready, be, be focused, handle business, and then hopefully Phoenix, they have a little bit of a slide. Uh, you know, we can't control other teams. We can't control Phoenix losing or winning games. Uh, but we have to trust that through just what they've shown through the natural just course of winning and losing games that the Lakers, they can control their side of things. They can control wins or losses on their end by just playing the right way. And if LeBron and AD and D'Lo and Reeves and Rui and Spence and all the other guys, if they can do what they need to do and start ramping up like LeBron, I think the Lakers could be in excellent shape getting to that A seed. Uh, obviously, it's not the uh, ideal shape, but you know, I'd rather be the eighth seed and have two chances to win one game to get into the playoffs than we need. We have no choice. We have to win two straight games against teams that are more than capable of beating us. And it's just a one-game sample size. It's really hard and just very unpredictable. That's the whole point, right? Like that's the whole idea is that you know, yeah, yeah. It, it's to add that like March Madness element to it. And so my hope is LeBron is leading by example and going, all right, like it, it's go time here. Now the Lakers, they got, they got a little nice, much needed break, right? They got basically four days in between the Atlanta game and the, the Sixers game. So use this to kind of rest your body, rest your mind. No. Get some light practices in. Get some work in. This is good because it allows guys to get healthy. Looks like Cam Reddish uh, is likely to be back uh, for that Sixers game. No Joel Embiid, so Lakers should be able to handle business there. You're at home. I'm hoping that this gives LeBron an opportunity to kind of recharge a little bit. Go into that Philly game. Again, lead by example. And be the energy and the catalyst that gets everyone else going. Because you, again, you saw in that, in that um, uh, Atlanta game, LeBron and AD really just set the tone for the Lakers. They were being aggressive. LeBron was not settling. He was driving to the basket. He was basically putting it on the deck and just going like, you guys can't stop me. And just was relentless at times during that game. And then that opened up his three-point shot, which he was able to knock down some threes and so on and so forth. And, but you saw that energize everyone else. All of a sudden, D'Lo's knocking down you know, six threes. And you, you see Reeves you know, hitting some nice shots. And Rui is doing Rui things. LeBron has that ability to, A, let me, let me get us going, get us established early, and then everyone else is now energized and pumped and watching, you know, uh, watching LeBron just do LeBron things. And now they feel like, okay, well, we need to match that, right? LeBron can't be out there doing everything and just dominating the game start to finish. And we're just kind of, you know, he's carrying our slack, right? Like that's the idea. And yes, there have been times this year where, you know, LeBron's tried to do and carry the team on his back by himself, uh, sometimes to success, right? Like the Clippers game. But hopefully the team kind of rallies around that. Anthony Davis gets going, gets aggressive, and you got your two, you know, leaders, your two stars being the guys that are are kind of steering the ship. And now, again, D'Lo has been spectacular this season. Austin Reeves has kind of been hot and cold, but hopefully – these last 13 games, he kind of find a rhythm, kind of find his place going into the playoffs. Rui has been spectacular this season. We start getting guys back. Right? Gabe Vincent's supposed to come back at some point this month uh, or, or early April. Jared Vanderbilt hopefully will be back at some point. 
Like I mentioned, Cam Reddish is supposed to be back for the Sixers game. This is good. Lakers have the potential to really kind of not fully right the ship, but, you know, kind of steer it back on path, back on course here a little bit and and get back to where we need to go. Obviously, you don't want to wear down and run LeBron down, especially at this point of the season. But LeBron, I mean, nobody knows LeBron and his body better than LeBron. Nobody knows what LeBron is capable of and what he can handle more than that. LeBron knows, like, this team needs me to be about as close to 100% as possible if we're going to have a chance to, to beat anybody and, and really make a run here and potentially win a championship. I, is it likely the Lakers win the championship? No, but I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, they still have talent. They still have a lot of very good, talented pieces. This team does look like a team that is built for the playoffs. And it's just like, can they get in? Like, I I keep saying it. I trust the Lakers in the playoffs. I just don't trust the Lakers to get there. Once they get to the playoffs, unless we run into Denver in the first round, which even then, I'd rather have a a chance than miss the playoffs entirely. Like, if you told me, hey, you can make the playoffs, but you play Denver in the first round or miss the playoffs entirely, give me Denver. Give me Denver all day, right? Because I'll take my chances. I'd rather have a shot and a puncher's chance to beat in Denver. And if you take down Goliath, well, now that opens up. Now the sun's shining. The you know, the the dark clouds have faded away. You know, you got rainbows and sunshine. Like that's the hope. Um, you know, so I, I'm I'm going to continue to be optimistic. I'm going to continue to have belief. I, I, not like, you know, obviously the Lakers are. <laughs> have not been the the best model of consistency this year. They've been, as I put it regularly, consistently inconsistent. And it's a a real problem with this team. And my hope is that you got 13 games. You don't got 60, you don't got 50, you don't got even 20. You got 13 games. And I think you got to win 10 of those, really. Now, maybe nine, but I think if you win 10 of those games, that would put you at 47 wins. Then I think, I think, uh, that should be enough to get you into the AC, personally. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Do you think that, uh, yeah, hey, LeBron, lead the charge. Be the example. Lead us to the promised land here. Do you think, you know, no, you don't want to run them down. Other guys need to step up. Um, again, how do you feel? What are your thoughts on? Love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Helps me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one.